Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here then hi, my name is Brittany. I'm a nurse practitioner. I am the creator of the Brittany Holzbeck NP Review. It is a comprehensive and affordable and accredited nurse practitioner boards review. My complete NP boards review course amongst other resources that I have created are available at www.thenewnp.com. You can see a little bit here on the screen of what I have available. And of course, I'll always have that link in the description box below if you want to go and check it out. Also, if you've seen, I have partnered with Freed AI and this is an AI clinician assistant that I use in my practice. I highly recommend if you are looking to save your time and sanity when charting on patients. It's a completely HIPAA compliant app that you can have on your phone. You take into your patient's room and it virtually acts like a scribe, documents everything, and then it takes all of the information that you gather during that visit and organizes it into subjective, objective data, helps to build your HPI, your assessment, your plan, patient education. It is such a useful resource. They also announced a bunch of new features within the app recently and they have specialty specific notes now so you can actually create the notes to sound just like you. They have specific note templates like family med, pediatrics, psych, ortho. They even have urgent care which is what I use. And so if it's something that you're interested in checking out, follow the link in my description box below. Use the code Brittany50, B-R-I-T-T-A-N-I 50 to get $50 off your first month. But okay, let's just get into today's topic. So somebody actually reached out to me on Instagram and requested that I make a video talking about anemias specifically and how they can better prepare for the nurse practitioner boards review. And it's funny because I actually did a poll on my Instagram asking those new nurse practitioners, so those that newly just took their boards, what they thought they could have studied a little bit more after they had seen the exam. And so many people came back and said that they would have put a little more effort into studying anemias. And so I thought, great. I have someone reaching out asking for some more information on anemias. I have tons of new nurse practitioners saying that they saw a lot of anemias on their boards. And so I wanted to make a video dedicated solely to this. And so let's get into it. But before we do, if you could just go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, Free way to help me out and I really do appreciate it. Alright, so before we get into the meat of the content, there are some definitions that you need to be familiar with when it comes to anemia. So one, what is anemia? So this is a decrease in red blood cells and essentially this refers to a low oxygen carrying capacity. And then various terms that you need to be familiar with. So there's the MCV and when seeing MCV, remember the word volume, it is telling you the size of the red blood cells. And so we know that these can be microcytic, so they can be small cells, macrocytic, large, and then normocytic, which would be normal sized cells. And then in line with the MCV is the MCH, and this is that mean corpuscular hemoglobin and this defines the color of the red blood cell so you can either remember hemoglobin or sometimes I tell students to remember hue for color because this is defining the color of the cells and so we can have hypochromic so more pale cells normal chromic normal color and then hyperchromic so they're hyperpigmented cells and so those are just some terms that you want to be familiar with one to be able to identify what they mean and when you're actually interpreting you know a cbc and you're seeing the numbers what mcv what mch what they are telling you about those red blood cells all right so now let's go over some of the specific types of anemias that you definitely need to know before you go take your nurse practitioner boards exam and first i want to cover iron deficiency anemia because this is the most common type of anemia and likely you will see at least a couple questions on iron deficiency anemia on your test and so how might these patients present so let's think about it they have a low amount of oxygen being delivered to their tissues. So they could be paler, so pale skin. Fatigue is a big one. They can be very tired, fatigued. Sometimes they can experience shortness of breath or dizziness and even tachycardia or that fast heart rate. And so what typically causes iron deficiency anemia? So there's a couple of common causes for this either blood loss, so specifically if they're losing blood in the GI tract or in women that are having heavy menstruation. And then also we can see reduced absorption, for example, in our patients that are post-bariatric surgery. And what kind of labs might we see with the patient that has iron deficiency anemia? So this is a hypochromic microcytic anemia. So low MCV and low MCH small cells and they are pale or non-pigmented. And so if we see these labs on a patient, 
on their CBC, it definitely can clue us into the patient potentially having iron deficiency anemia, but it is not diagnostic. Ultimately, we are going to need to get an iron study done and we need to get a ferritin done. Typically, what is used for a cutoff with the ferritin is a ferritin less than 30 is generally considered to be diagnostic for iron deficiency anemia. And so how do we treat these patients? Well, it's really very straightforward. We need to replace their iron. Typically, we use oral iron supplementation, there are a couple of indications when we do IV. So for example, patients that are having continuous blood loss, if they have inflammatory bowel disease, chronic kidney disease, if they are in their second or third trimester of pregnancy, if they've had some kind of gastric surgery or we're just concerned for malabsorption in general, or any patient that's going to require rapid correction, those patients will get IV iron supplementation. Otherwise, we are replacing their iron orally. So another microcytic hypochromic anemia are going to be the thalassemias. And there are two main types of thalassemia. We have alpha and we have beta thalassemia. And this type of anemia is really more common in the Mediterranean demographic. And unlike iron deficiency anemia, which occurs from blood loss or malabsorption, the thalassemias are actually an inherited form of anemia. The diagnostic tests for the thalassemias are going to be the hemoglobin electrophoresis or genetic testing. And symptoms, there is a wide range of symptoms with the thalassemias. So they can be completely asymptomatic or they can be severely anemic, severely symptomatic, have splenomegaly, experience jaundice, skeletal abnormalities, just so much can go on with these patients. It is really important to note that these patients do not require iron supplementation and actually supplementing thalassemia patients with iron can be very detrimental to them. Over time, they can actually end up building these toxic levels of iron within their body. They can experience liver injury, heart injury, endocrine organ injuries. It can be so detrimental to them. So it's such an important education point that patients that have thalassemia are not supplemented with iron. These patients need to be referred to hematology. Typically, they do require transfusions and sometimes will even require a splenectomy. Next up, let's talk about B12 and folate deficiencies, which cause a macrocytic anemia. Conditions and factors that have been associated with vitamin B12 deficiency include decreased intake of animal products, so either a vegan diet or even a very strict vegetarian diet. Also children that are breastfed by a B12 deficient mother. And then factors that have been associated with folate deficiency include increased requirements due to pregnancy, decreased intake, the most at risk being patients that overuse alcohol, or in persons that use goat milk as a main source of food in infants and children. Also, residents in a place where food fortified with folate does not occur. All of those are factors associated with a folate deficiency. Also, patients that are post-bariatric surgery are going to be at a risk for malabsorption and can experience both B12 and folate deficiencies. So the most common presentation with these patients is going to be fatigue and again, that macrocytic anemia on their CBC. Those neurological findings that are associated with these deficiencies don't occur as much as they used to because we are catching these deficiencies earlier and those neuro symptoms are actually later findings. If a patient has B12 or folate deficiency, we are replacing what they're deficient in. Typically, the B12 is given intramuscularly and the folate is given orally. Next, I just want to talk really briefly about aplastic anemia, which is actually incorrectly identified because this is a pancytopenia. Not only are they low in their red blood cells, but they're low in their white blood cells and their platelets as well. So really the term anemia is not an appropriate title. But instead of just anemia, we see this pancytopenia, which is a result of that person's failure of their bone marrow. And this is believed to be an autoimmune response. And so because of this, we can still see those classic findings that we associate with anemia, for example, fatigue, but we can also see petechiae, increased risk of infection, and this is due to those low white blood cells, those low platelets. We can see increased bleeding. They can be very symptomatic. And so diagnosis of aplastic anemia is done through evaluating the patient's bone marrow. Typically they take a biopsy and these patients can require a bone marrow transplant. And then last up, I want to talk about sickle cell anemia. And this is characterized by the presence of hemoglobin S. So generally red blood cells are round and they move through the blood vessels easily. But with sickle cell anemia, 
anemia, these red blood cells sickle. They become kind of like this crescent shape. They can become very sticky and rigid. And this will stop the blood cells from moving easily through the vessels and they can actually cause vaso occlusion. And so persistent vaso occlusion can lead to acute and chronic pain. It can cause tissue ischemia and even infarction. So in 2008, screening for sickle cell in newborns was mandated in all 50 states of the US. And there are various ways to diagnose those sickle cell disorders. I'm going to put those on the screen here. There are a couple of different options, but it's important to know that these patients do not have a normal functioning spleen, making them at an increase increased risk for infections. And so it's going to be so important that these patients, one, remain up to date on all of the recommended vaccinations, but also they are given prophylactic penicillin. It started within the first three months of their life. It can go up until about five years, sometimes even longer. But all right, I think that's going to end the discussion on anemias for boards. Hopefully you found it helpful. Don't forget to check out the links in the description. You can go to my website. You can see my boards review course. You can also see I have some other courses is available like I said like a pharmacology crash course a new NP clinical pearls membership I add content to that weekly lots of case studies stuff like that so definitely check it out also if you're interested in checking out freed AI the virtual scribe make sure you use my link and my code Brittany 50 to get $50 off your first month but all right guys other than that I wish you guys nothing but the best don't forget to learn something new every day and I'll talk to you soon bye guys